Here is your Radio Theater Channel weekly podcast for download. The RTC still has the very best old-time radio on the live streaming. And if it's music you love, tune in to the RTC Music Channel, where this link and many others are on our website at oldtimeradiolisten.com. Now, here's Jim. Thank you, Jim, and welcome to the RTC Weekly Download. I'm your host, Jim Dolan. We're here today to listen to another hour of old-time radio, and I think we got a pretty good one for you today. If you're a lover of Western stuff, all things Western, well... That's what we've got. But usually when we play Westerns, we play the adult Westerns. You know, Gunsmoke and Have Gun Will Travel, things like that. But today we're going to treat the kid in you with Gene Autry and Roy Rogers. So this is a little bit of the Old West kid style. We'll start off with Gene Autry and one called Newly Elected Sheriff Smuggles Aliens. Now we don't have a date on this one, but uh, we can be assured that it's from the 1940s. <laughs> He's back in the saddle again. Yes, it's time once again for Melody Ranch and Gene Autry. I'm back in the saddle again. Out where a friend is a friend. Where the longhorn cattle feed on the lowly Jimson weed. I'm back in the saddle again. That's right, folks. It's another visit with all the gang here at Melody Ranch. There's Pat Buttram, the Cass County Boys, the Gene Autry Blue Jeans, Carl Cotner's Melody Ranch Hardway 6 featuring Alvino Ray, and yours truly, Charlie Lyon. Right now, though, meet the boss man himself, America's favorite cowboy, Gene Autry. When you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. When you're laughing, when you're laughing, the sun comes shining through. But when you're crying, you bring on the rain, so stop your sighing. Be happy again, keep on smiling, cause when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. When you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. When you're laughing, when you're laughing, the sun comes shining through. But when you're crying, you bring on the rain, so stop your sighing. Be happy again, keep on smiling, cause when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. Well, howdy there, friends and neighbors, and welcome once again to Melody Ranch. Really great, Albino Ray. And now, folks, here's one of the prettier current favorites. Goes as follows: If you found someone new who means more than me to you, I'll never stand in your way. If you feel we must part. Don't let pity ruin your heart I'll never 
stand in your way I love you much too much to ever lose you But what is to be will be and I'll obey I'll be blue when you go But I'll never let it show I'll never stand in your way I love you much, too much to ever lose you But what is to be will be an I'll be blue when you go, but I'll never let it show. I'll never stand in your way. Oh, thank you, good friends. Many, many thanks. And now... Brother, ooh. Oh, I ain't never been so cold in my life. Must be at least 30 below outside. Oh, Ooh. now, come, 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 Patrick. It's not really cold. You just think it is. Is that so? Yes, well, that's for so. for your information, I had so many blankets on me last night, I felt like the bottom hotcake. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just too warm-blooded, that's all. Oh. Now, get your coat on and bring in some more of that wood from out the back. Nothing doing. It's too cold out there. Oh, for crying out loud, Pat. Now, come on, brace up. Call on your manhood. I did. No answer. (laughs) Well, that figures. Incidental, Mr. Artery, uh, I just got a letter this morning from a couple of friends of mine back home. Uh, Would you like to hear it? (laughs) Well, what if I say no? Uh, you're going to hear it anyway. <laughs> Just what I thought. It starts off by saying, uh, Dear Pat. Well, that's original. Yeah, uh, please. Now, do you mind here? Oh, I'm sorry. All right. All right, Patrick. Go ahead. Thanks. As I said before, uh, Dear Pat, some fellers can get away with anything. In fact, there's one right here in Winston County that does. The duties of the so-called good citizen are just so much bunk, as far as he's concerned. He don't vote at either the primaries or the general election. What's more, he never thinks of paying a bill. We've seen him take a $2 taxi ride without giving the driver so much as a pleasant look. He won't work a lick. He won't go to church. He can't play cards or dance. In fact, so far as is known, he has no intellectual or cultural interest at all. He neglects his appearance terribly. He's so lazy. He'd let the house burn down before he'd turn in an alarm. The telephone can ring itself off in the wall, and he won't bother to answer it. Even on such a controversial subject as the liquor question, nobody knows exactly where he stands because one minute he's wet, the next minute he's dry. (laughs) But we'll say this much for him. In spite of all his fault, he comes from a darn good family. He's our new baby. So long, Mr. Harper. <laughs> well, so long, Patrick. That was really wonderful. And now, here's the musical cure for any financial blues that you may have. The Cast County Boys and... Oil, 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 oil. All that oil in Texas. All that oil in Texas. All that oil in Texas. And not one drop is mine. All those steers in Texas Got a whole lot of cows in Texas All those steers in Texas And not one cow is mine There's a rich gal, her name is Sal Lives down by the Alamo I'm going steady with a gal named Betty But I ain't got no spending dough All that oil in Texas All that oil in Texas All that oil in Texas And not one drop is mine Texas, land, land, land in Texas, gold, gold, gold. 
gold in Texas, not one cent is mine. Everything there is bigger and better, so the Texans boast. Summers are drier, winters are wetter, say man, it is the most. All that oil in Texas, all that oil in Texas, all that oil in Texas, and not one drop is mine. Ah, Cass County boys, I for one really enjoyed that. Play that waltz again. Sleepy Rio Grande. Let me dream of bright Spanish eyes. Dreams that will never end Pale moon high above Nights just made for love Let me hear those mandolins play Sleep here, oh, grand. friends. We're mighty glad you liked it. Right now, it's story time once again here at Melody Ranch. So if you'll all just settle back and relax, I'd like to recall for you a yarn that took place quite some years ago. Matter of fact, it started at election time when all you could hear around these parts was Who's going to be our next sheriff? Of course, Jim Dillon had been for more years than most of us could remember. And he was a good, solid citizen, too. A little slow in his methods, maybe. But no one could ever say that he wasn't honest. Now, for the first time, though, he was having trouble in his campaign for re-election. Seems that a young, unknown fellow named Steve Barker had come to Sagebrush and was succeeding in making the results look more than just a little doubtful for Jim. Anyway, finally, election day rolled around. And with it, one of the biggest turnouts in the county's history. Well, it wasn't more than noon, though, before Jim Dillon had conceded defeat, and young Steve Barker was our new sheriff. Naturally, I was sorry. Jim Dillon was one of my best friends. But getting back to the story, about two weeks later, I guess it was, Jim and I had just been out to a rancher's meeting in town and were on our way back to my place. Anyway, Jim, as usual, was still talking about the election. Well, I still say, Gene, there's something funny about this whole thing, and I, for one, don't like it. A man don't just come from nowhere and decide he wants to be sheriff, spend a lot of money doing it, and get elected without, mind you, having a reason. And that reason is what's bothering me. Well, I grant you it sounds a little odd, all right, Jim. But what are you going to do about it? Uh, you certainly can't say that Steve Barker didn't win the election fair and square. Election? <laughs> a bunch of soft heads falling for a lot of... Hey, wait a minute. What's that up ahead of us? Where? Over there. Pull off the road to the right. Looks like one of them big truck trailers. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is, Jim. Come on, let's see if he's in trouble. Come on, Chad. All right, my boy, come on. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, boy. Hey, mister. Need any help? Oh, thanks, cowboy. Just right on. Everything's under control. Well, we'd be glad to go into town and send out a garage man if you want. I said everything's okay. Now beat it. Why, you... Forget it, Jim. Let's go. Well, okay, but for two I cents... Said I said skip it. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Well, in behind that clump of trees as soon as we round this next bend, Jim. Yeah, well, what in thunder are you up to now? Well, do as I say. You'll find out. Oh, Jack. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Hello, look, will you please tell me what this is all about? Just this, Jim. Huh? Did you hear anything funny going on back there? No, why? Uh, what'd you hear? People. And they weren't talking English. Look, Autry, be reasonable. You can't expect me to believe a half cock story like that. A van full of people parked on a highway at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, it's ridiculous. Maybe so, Sheriff. But remember, by truck, the border's only a few hours away from oh, here. I know, but... Oh, excuse me a minute. Oh, sure, go ahead. Hello, Sheriff's office. A long distance? Okay, put him on. Yeah, this is Sheriff Parker. I, uh, I can't talk to you right now. What? Okay, go ahead. P-76. R-34. J-11. D-13. T-23. Okay, right. Uh, just the sheriff over in Pine City reading me some warrant number. <laughs> well, look, Sheriff, I know you're busy. So if I hear anything else, suppose I'll let you know. Sure, uh, sure, you do that. In fact, drop in any time, Autry. Any time. <laughs> Thanks, Chef. Uh, what'd you say, Gene? Never mind that now, Jim. Come on, we got a lot of work to do. Let's see now. E76. That's the first number that I wrote down on that paper. Right? Mm, that's right. And we figured out that P-76 might mean passengers or persons. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, for now, let's say that's right. All right. What's next? Uh, next, uh, R-34. R, R. Uh, let's see, ridge, rifles, uh, rabbits, raid, route, uh, raid. Wait a minute, Jim, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Isn't 34 the number of the alternate truck route from here to Rim Rock? Hey, you're right, it is. All right, then R has to mean route. 34. Well, yeah. it doesn't have to, but it could. Oh, yeah. What's the next number you got there? Uh, it's a uh, uh, J11. J11. Mm-hmm. J, J. How about a man's name, say, Jack or John? Or... J. Well, yeah. Yeah, but wait a minute. How, how does that 11 fit in there? Maybe it means Jack or John and 11 men. Mm. Yet that doesn't fit quite the same way the rest of them do. No, no it sure doesn't. Oh, let's see. J, J, J. Hey, hold it, Jim. Yeah? I think I've got it. Yeah, what? J stands for junction. Junction 11. J, J. Well, I'll be... Of course it does. Route 34 and junction 11. Hey, Gene, that's just beyond Clem Howard spread, about uh, about six miles out of town. Yeah. Now, let's see here. What have we got so far? Uh, now, let's see. Now, let's see here. We got uh, 76 people, Route 34 and junction 11. That's right. Uh-huh. What's next? Uh, next. Now, let's see here. Uh, yeah, T, T-23. T-23. I don't know what that means. Well, suppose we'll work backwards. Mm, how do you mean? Well, we've got what and where. All we need now is when, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. So T could mean time. Time? Oh, but Gene, there ain't no such time as 23. Maybe it means 2.30. Oh, uh, maybe, but... But then which one, AM or PM? Hey, wait a minute. Huh? You just reminded me of something. Yeah. All branches of the armed forces use a 24-hour clock. That way, instead of starting all over again at 12 noon with the number one, they just keep on going. Yeah. Don't have to designate AM or PM. Well, then 23 could mean 11 PM, correct? If we're figuring right, it does. 
All right, now that makes the D easy then. You see, that's got to be... Hey, wait a minute. Hey, what's the date today? The 13th. Uh-huh. And so is this number, D-13. Well, what are we waiting for? It's nine o'clock now. Yeah, that means we've only got two hours. Right. Grab your guns and let's go. What time you got, Joe? Why don't I take a look? Uh, 11.17. I wonder where the boss is. Don't worry, he'll show up. I ain't worried. Just don't like long waits, that's all. Sure, sure. You're jumpy, that's all. Here, have a cigarette. Thanks. Don't mind if I do. Sure is a nice night. Yeah. Hey. Hey, ain't that a light over there? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Don't signal back yet. Oh. Huh? Two shorts, two longs. All right, flick your lights once. All right, he sees it. Here he comes. Open the door. Sorry I'm late, boys. I got held up in town. Forget it, forget it. Where will we unload this bunch? In a barn about three miles up. I'll lead the way. You follow. All right. Oh, yeah, one other thing before I forget it. You better lay low on this route for a while. Some cowboy named Autry may be getting a little wise. Wiser than you think, Barker. Huh. It's Autry. Run him down, boys. Yeah. Why, you dirty... I wouldn't reach for that gun. All right, Barker. Ah, nice shoot, Gene. Nice shooting. All right, you. All right, all right. On your feet and with your hands up. Your little smuggling game is all over. Keep a gun on him, Jim, while I go and get his two chums out of that truck. All right, don't worry about that. Hey, but uh, what are we going to do with all them people locked up inside? I'll stay here and watch them while you go into town and call the immigration uh, boys. You ain't got nothing on me. That depends on what you call nothing, Barker. But if my memory serves me correctly, smuggling aliens into this country carries a minimum of ten years in jail. Uh, What's more, all the proof we need is right here in that truck. It's for you, Jim. Well, you better get going. Huh? It's late and you haven't been getting much sleep here the past week. Besides, the sheriff is supposed to be in his office at 8 a.m. sharp. Sheriff? Sheriff? Hey, uh, that's right, I am. And so, folks, that ended the shortest term in public office that we've ever had here in Sagebrush. That is, with one exception. Pat Buttram once served as honorary mayor for 15 minutes. Seems that he was asked to make a speech in front of the women's volunteer school auxiliary on the subject of how to teach your child the importance of a good memory. There was only one thing wrong. He forgot his pants. <laughs> Well, right now it's time to introduce this week's Cowboy Classic. A song that, in our opinion, represents the best in Western music. Such a song we feel is this beautiful tune the boys and girls are about to join me in singing now. Just a melancholy echo Lingering when the day is through it's the call of the canyon Once again I'm dreaming of you Every night I search the moonlight Up and down the river shore It's the call of the canyon Maybe I will find you once more Standing there alone by the ashes Of the fire we said would never die Will I ever find an ember Burning from the days gone by then I hear a lonely whisper 
has a little spark I see It's the call of the canyon Bringing back your answer to me Standing there alone by the ashes All the fiery sand would never die Will I ever find a river Burning from the days gone by Then I hear a lonely whisper As a little spark I see It's the call of the canyon Bringing back your answer to me It's the call of the canyon Bringing back your answer to me Thank you, kids. That was real fine. Hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. The prettiest gal I ever knew, and I'm going to make her mine. I came down from Butte, Montana, for a little change of scene. And I stopped today in Santa Fe, where I met a pretty queen. Oh, I planned to leave on Monday, but she held me kind of tight. So I held the ground and hung around and I left on Friday night. Hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. The prettiest gal I ever knew and I'm going to make her mine. I was kind of blue and lonely, so I took my horse and pack. And on Sunday morning was up and gone, heading south and riding back. At the gate I found her waiting, I was happy as could be. Then I told her that I loved her true And she said that she loved me Hair of gold, eyes of blue Lips like cherry white The prettiest gal I ever knew And I'm going to make her mine America's favorite cowboy, Gene Autry, will be back this way next week. And he'll bring along Pat Buttram, the Cass County Boys, the Gene Autry Blue Jeans, Carl Cotner's Mulledy Ranch Hardway 6 featuring Alvino Ray, and yours truly, Charlie Lyon. 
For an exciting and entertaining half hour, be sure you're listening. Next time I say, it's time for Melody Ranch and Gene Autry. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. Gene Autry and newly elected Sheriff Smuggles Aliens. Just uh, the thing, huh? <laughs> well, now we have this for you. Please, Mr. Heaton, there. Not today. No, I, I'm just not up to doing a show. What's the matter, Charlie? Oh, don't, don't jump at me like that. You startled me, Bergen. Can't you see? I'm just, I'm just a bundle of nerves tonight. Just nerves. Just twitching nerves. <laughs> there I go again. See? Yeah. <laughs> well, what in the world's the matter with you, Charlie? You, you look a little worried. Uh, what's the matter? Well... I tell you, I am worried. Yes, you certainly have a worried look on your face. Well, where else could I have it? Well, <laughs> I'm worried all over. Though. Yeah. Yeah. It awful thing. You see, I just had a terrible dream last night. Yes. Oh, terrible. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Dreams should never upset you, though. You know, the other night I had a serious dream. You can't imagine what I thought I was. A good ventriloquist? No, no. <laughs> Oh, but this wasn't just a dream. This was a nightmare. Ugh, it was awful. Yeah. Well, there's no reason to be frightened at all. You All you have to remember is that the dreams and reality are almost inseparable. Uh, You've heard uh, of the philosopher who dreamed that he was a butterfly uh, and broke his leg chasing after the birds and bees? No, no. no. <laughs> so, when the philosopher awoke, he said last night, I was a man dreaming I was a butterfly, but this morning, I'm a butterfly dreaming I'm a man. Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yes, well, either way, I think you ought to drop a net over in the yeah. air. <laughs> Cheerio, pip, pip, tally ho, and all those ridiculous statements we British are supposed to make. Yeah. <laughs> Hold the net, here comes another one. Oh. <laughs> Ray, you'll have to excuse Charlie. He's very upset about a bad dream that he had last night. Really? Yes. Yeah. You know, I had a terrible dream myself last night. Oh? Mm -hmm. All night long, I dreamt I was being chased by blondes. Hundreds of blondes. Well, what's so bad about being chased by blondes? My dear boy, these were blonde elephants. Oh. <laughs> Get the net, boy. All right. <laughs> you know, this is almost as bad as a nightmare. Yeah, well, I wish I could tell you about the... Uh, where did I get this right? Well, you certainly haven't got it right now. No. <laughs> I wish you would tell me uh, what your nightmare was about, Charlie. Well, now, you first tell me something, Bergen. Uh, do you believe that dreams uh, foretell the future? Oh, definitely, yes. Oh, I once had a great uncle who dreamed he became a nut Sunday. And he did? Well, no, as a matter of fact, he became a nut Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, that was the day they took him away. <laughs> oh, I do miss him. Well, I don't... <laughs> don't you worry. You'll probably join him. <laughs> Charlie, why were you worried about your future? Was your nightmare a bad one? Well, yes, I, I dreamed I cashed in my chips. Oh, Charlie, you don't mean you uh, overturned the receptacle? Yes, yes. Uh, that is kicked the bucket, yes. Right. <laughs> dream that you passed on. Oh, it was horrible. Oh, yes. Well, I don't blame you for being down in the dumps. Yeah, but in the dream, I was in the lowest dumps of all. Oh. <laughs> Good heavens. Boy, have you got the wrong direction, huh? <laughs> you don't mean Charlie. Oh, not my little Charlie. Yeah. You mean you went to... Uh... Well, it wasn't Disneyland. I... <laughs> I don't know what to say. Well, we'll just say I went to the unhappy hunting ground. <laughs> I say, oh boy, uh, couldn't you be just a little more specific? Well, not and stay on the air, no. <laughs> Let me put it this way. You know how I used to like to visit all the hot spots? Well, last night I hit the jackpot. I... <laughs> you can't mean that you actually were there. Let's face it, Bergy. I was a wetback from the River Styx. Oh, I see. <laughs> I say, uh, yeah. pardon me, old thing, did you say the river sticks? Yeah, that's right, Ray. Well, if it does, why don't they oil it? I was... Ooh! <laughs> oh, no! It almost makes the other place enjoyable now. All right. <laughs> Charlie, I insist on knowing just what happened to you in this awful dream. Well, you see, Satan asked me to tell all the bad things I'd done. 
Well, what did you tell him? Well, I refused to answer on the grounds that he might incinerate me. Yeah, as I <laughs> Oh, really, Charles, oh boy. Are you trying to make us believe you actually spoke to Satan? Well, sure. No, don't you don't you believe there, there is a, a, a devil? Oh, well, hardly, old boy. I mean, it's like Santa Claus. It's your father. No. <laughs> <laughs> no but, but tell me, Charles, what did you think of the place down there in general? Well, just to get an idea, I'll uh -huh. tell you. Uh, take it from me, it's nothing but a fire trap down there. <laughs> And there's more firing down there than on the Arthur Godfrey show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't know the half of it, Bergen. The punishment they give you is just awful. You have to listen to radio all day. Yeah. What's on the radio? Frost warnings. Oh, I... <laughs> For the real bad cases, our show. I see. <laughs> you should see the TV shows they have down there. TV, yeah. Toast of the Town, <laughs> Heat Parade, Burns and Allen, Sear It Now, and I Love Lucifer. All right. <laughs> I think that's enough. Now, tell me something. Don't you know what good, clean living is? No, what good is it? Well, I... Uh... <laughs> Listen to your conscience. It's no use. Why? I got bad reception. I, I live in a fringe area. All right. I'm trying to point out something to you, Charlie. Of course, you know what made you dream like that. No, but I got a hunch. When I woke up, I noticed the control on my electric blanket had moved from rare to well done. I... Well, I hope you've learned a lesson from this and decided to denounce Satan. No, Bergen, I'm in no position to antagonize anybody. I... <laughs> Who knows, I might have to go back there someday. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is terrible. Oh, it wouldn't be too bad. I could make a fortune down there smuggling in electric fans. <laughs> Place is just crying for a sprinkler system. Yeah, Charlie. <laughs> oh, there'll be a hot time in the old town, too. <laughs> okay, partners, it's time to saddle up again with an episode of Roy Rogers. This is called The Human Game, and it's from February 1st of 1952. P-O-S-T! P-O-S-T, Post, the serials you like the most, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's Roundup Time on the Double R Bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The Double R Bar Ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Dale Evans. And in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Say, what makes breakfast the best meal of the day? You buckaroos can answer that one. It's Post Cereals. You know you can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. So have Mom put Post Cereals on the shelf where they'll be handy all the time. Well, sir, the Paradise Valley ranchers have been bothered by rustlers again the past few weeks, and everybody is watching mighty close to see some sign that will lead to the rustlers' trail. Howdy, Dick. Well, howdy, Sheriff. Here you ain't had much luck catching the rustling gang yet. Not much, but we'll get them sooner or later. Hey, Dick, I'm thinking about buying a new saddle. How much will it cost me? Well, I'll show you what we got, Sheriff. Uh, have them at three or four prices, depending on how good a saddle you want. Uh, who's... Why, good morning, Mr. Platt. Morning, Lappin. Good to see you, Sheriff. How's things out your way, Sheriff? Uh, I'm worried about rustlers, same as anybody else. What's new on them? Well, we're ready for them this time if they strike again. Uh, you can wait on him first, Dick. I'll be having a look at the saddles. Uh huh. Lappin, you got any 30 30 rifle cartridges? Oh, lots of them. You going hunting? Hmm. Might call it that. I'd be careful about game, Mr. Platt. You shoot anything there's a closed season on. And there's you... no closed season on two legged game in this country. Two legged? Game that walks on the. You two... mean Bob Noble, don't you, Shell? Now, look here. That feud between you and Noble is liable to lead to killing. 
I want to stop. You understand? Where's my box of shells, Lappin? All right here, Mr. Platt. I'll get hold of Bob and bring you two together. We'll work out your difficulties if we have I to. wouldn't be seen on the same side of the street with that hombre, Sheriff. Not even if he was dead. Put these on my bill, Lappin. Sheriff! Rustlers are at it again. Uh, uh, what's that? Rustlers. Here, yeah, rustlers. They're taking my cattle. If we can put a posse on our trail, we can grab them this time. Posse standing by, ready to go. Now, you put them on the trail, then. I saw Roy Rogers heading for the cafe as I went by. I'll see if he can help us. This looks like the chance we've been waiting for. You bet I'll ride with you, Tom. That goes for me, too. Oh, convolutions. Another ten minutes and I could have finished a chapter of the book I'm writing. I found the hoof prints leading toward six points. All right. We'll let the sheriff and his posse follow him. We'll take the shortcut over the mountains. Maybe we'll be able to put him in a pocket. Hey, look down there, across the valley. It's a herd of cattle, all right. Are they yours, Tom? I can't see from this distance. They may be. Well, don't forget now, Roy. The pen is mightier than the sword. You can throw your pen at him, Jonah. I'm going to use a gun. Oh, fudge. Tom? We'll ride down on them from this side. You go back and tell the posse to close in fast. You bet, Roy. Dale, Jonah, make all the noise you can when we're coming up to the herd. We'll have a better chance of taking the rustlers if we stampede the cattle. All right, go after them. Trigger leaps out in front toward the escaping rustlers. In seconds, he is pulled abreast of one. Roy leaps at the man, pulling him from his horse. The two men fall to the ground heavily. They struggle. Roy gets the upper hand, begins to subdue the outlaw. At the same time, Jonah rides alongside the other rustler, bulldogs him. They hit the ground together. Dale is there, dismounting. She puts a gun on the rustler. I'll bring this hombre over there. And we'll wait for the posse. It'll be coming along soon. Well, we got two of them anyway, Sheriff. And that makes a good start. All right, head for town. Get on the way to the lockup. Yeah, sure. The way I twisted my hand when I took that feller off his horse, I bet you I won't be able to do no writing for a week. Another week of grace for the world. Pooh. Now, you two quit kidding, Jonah. We wouldn't have had both of these rustlers if it hadn't been for him. Oh, he knows we were just kidding, don't you, Jonah? My apologies, General's boy. Uh, Pooh. What's the matter? Don't you feel well, Jonah? Yes, I feel fine. I say just fine. Then where's that well-known temper of yours? Don't let him get your goat, Jonah. Save your breath. As soon as we get these armors to jail, we'll pick up Bullet and have him trail the rest of the gang. Uh huh. We'll have to do it alone, too. The posse's busy rounding up the cattle we stampeded. Listen, what was that? Oh, maybe we won't have to go for Bullet after all. Sheriff, can you get these armors back to town alone? Wait, Roy. The sound came from the direction of Bob Noble's ranch. Yeah, it did sound like it. I met Sheldon Platt in the hardware store early this morning, buying 30-30 ammunition. He said he was going after two-legged game. The feud, his family and Bob Noble's. Convolutions. You attend to these two, Sheriff. Dale and Joan and I will see where that shot came from. We'll see you later. Well, everything looks calm enough here. We'll walk up to the house and find out. You mean I got to figure out a title? Boy, I'd a whole lot rather fight a gang of rustlers than have a feud break out between two of our friends. Gee, now, people I have known, and what about them? What are you talking about, Jonah? Did you... Huh? Oh, uh, the title for my book. I got almost a whole chapter wrote, Roy, and I ain't selected the title yet. Well, you may not live to select the title if you don't keep your mind on your business. M.C., the friends and enemies of Jonah Wilde during the first 61 years of his career. Yeah, yeah, a lot of good your talking did, Roy. Yeah, I know. Well, it'd be all right for a set of books. It's too long for one, though. Seems like. Come on here, yeah. Jonah. Wake up. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, say, Roy and Dale, too. There's something I've been wanting to ask you about. A delicate matter. 
Well, this is a fine time to think about it. Just how delicate, Jonah? Well, you see, Dale... Howdy. Oh, oh, interruptions. Always interruptions. This is an unexpected pleasure. Hi, Hello, Bob. Mr. Noble. Uh, come in, won't you? Thanks. We can't stay. We're out after the gang that tried to rustle Tom Hill's cattle. And we heard a shot fired off in this direction. Ah, uh, yes. I heard it too, Roy. You don't know what it was? No, I haven't given it much thought. I just naturally supposed my boy, young Bob, had spotted a coyote. He's riding the North Range somewhere. Hmm, that's a relief. See now, stories nobody would listen to. That's a good time. Oh, we were no, a little worried no. about you. Otherwise, we wouldn't have bothered coming to your house. About me? Why? On account of the feud between you and Shell Platt. <laughs> well, well, it's nice of you to think about me, Roy, but I don't reckon our feud would ever reach the shooting stage. Shell might fence off a water hole. It could or... reach the shooting stage, though, Bob. Oh, no, no. The no. sheriff ran into Platt this morning buying 30 30 ammunition. Said he was after two legged game. You're just fooling, aren't you, Roy? No, he isn't. I wish I was. Well, I. Well, you folks, excuse me. I, I'll get my horse. I don't believe Platt would kill anybody, but all the same, I'd like to check and see that young Bob's all right. Well, we'll go with you. If anything has happened to your boy, you may need help. I'm just wasting your folks' time. I know I am. Shell Platt isn't mean enough to take a spite out on a man's family. Well, it won't hurt to make sure. And then we'd all feel better. Some poor cats and friends I have no now. Well, that ain't bad. <laughs> Easy trigger. Listen, he sees something. Poor cats and friends I have no. Hmm, that's pretty good. Whoa, whoa. Steady, boy. <laughs> hey, look there. The others look in the direction Roy indicates. At first, they see nothing but the great silent rocks that are common to the country. The air is still. I don't see anything, Roy. Wait. It's gone now. They look again. Still nothing. Now, a slight movement behind the rocks. Someone is hiding there. Roy's hand goes to his gun. Come out from there. Make it snappy. Again, silence. The hidden person is out of sight again. Come on, or we'll ride after you. A slight movement. A man, a very young man, appears. His body sways. He takes a step out into the open, staggering. It's young Bob. He's hurt. Son! Let's get over there to him. What is it? What's the matter, son? Nothing's the matter. Let me alone. He's been wounded. I'm all right. Well, you don't look all right to me. Why, he can hardly stand. Oh, I never will get a title with all this to do going on. I don't need you. Well, what are you doing here? I, I can take care of my own affairs. He's passed out. The wound, Roy. Hey, you folks look after Bob. I got something else to do. Stay right where you are. Now, you better take it easy, Mr. I'll Noble. I'll take it easy after I see Shell Platt laying dead. None of that now, Noble. I'll hunt Platt down just like any other coyote. Come back here. Use your head. Let me loose, Roy. Here, here, now, calm down. The first thing you know, you spend five or ten years behind bars making license plates for automobiles. I'm leaving now. Hey, cut it out. I'm trying to help you, Bob. No, no. I'm going to kill the man who shot my son. Don't let him just keep hitting you, Roy. Bob, I hate to do this, and I know you'll be sorry later. Well, he had it coming. Well, I don't blame him much when his son has been shot. All right. Let's see what we can do for the boy. Say, do you like to raid the kitchen much as folks around Double R Bar Ranch do? Well, you know what the cook out there discovered? Folks love to nibble on post-sugar crisp right out of the package. Just like candy. That's right, it's that good. And, of course, post-sugar crisp were just made to brighten up breakfast. Mmm, just poured into a big bowl with milk or cream. You don't need sugar. That delicious candy-coated puffed wheat is just sweet enough. You'll love it served the same way between meals, too, as a special snack or just before bedtime. Yes, post-sugar crisp is fun to eat all day long. There's lots of wholesome goodness in post-sugar crisp, too. It gives you wheat for nourishment... The sugar and honey coating for quick energy. So, how about it? Have you tried Post Sugar Crisp yet? Look for it at your grocer's in the giant or regular size red, white, and blue package with the three little bears on the front. Young 
Bob Noble lies on the ground while Roy, with Dale's and Jonah's assistance, attends his wound. The boy's father gets unsteadily to his feet and tries to piece together all that has happened. How Roy, Dale, and Jonah were trailing rustlers and came to the ranch on hearing a gunshot. How they found young Bob wounded, probably by Shell Platt. Noble remembers now. Roy knocked him out when he wanted to kill Shell. His anger mounts. His determination to kill Shell is renewed. But the others are paying no attention to him. I'm all right, I tell you. I don't want to go to any doctor. Well, what you want makes no difference. We're going to take you to the doctor. My life among idiots and wise men. Yes. Uh, no, I won't do it. Mr. Noble. Hey. What? Well, we're going to take your boy into the doctor now. We want you to come along. All right. Uh, look here, Bob. I'm mighty sorry I had to hit you. Roy had to do it, Mr. Noble. If he'd let you go, you'd have ridden out of here and tried to kill Shell Platt. Yeah, I know. I, I would have killed him. But you can't hold me back forever, Rogers. Well, this is your boy who's hurt, Bob. It seems to me you'd want to help us with him. Yeah. All right. Sure. That's the stuff. You'll feel a lot better when you have time to think things out. Lift his shoulders here. We'll get him up on the horse. Noble does as Roy asks, and on the ride to Mineral City seems resigned, though sullen. At the doctor's office, he waits until the doctor says his son is out of danger, then disappears. Roy, Deal, and Jonah stay on, however, because the doctor is called away, and young Bob is in no condition to be left alone. I'm getting out of here. Not yet, I'm afraid. The doc said you were to rest here for a couple of hours. Curious, folks, and what they've done. Yeah, no, no kicking that. This is no good. This is no good. Oh, you don't want to leave without your dad, Bob. He'll be back soon. He's over the sheriff's office making a report on the shooting. What's he interfering in my affairs for? I can attend to my own business. I don't need help. Oh, Dad Raddit, stop this noise, will you? How can I think of a title for my book with your big bazoon going all the time? Well, Jonah, you didn't exactly whisper. People don't understand an artist at work, do they, Jonah? No, sir, Roy, they don't. Sixty-one years of trying to deal with human beings... A little long, but it's good thinking. What's he jabbering about? Uh, who knows? Well, my book. I say my book. I'm writing a book. Because nobody ever listens to me when I try to say something. It's a book Look, all about... I'm not fooling. Uh, i got to get out of here. Yeah, you see there? Proves my point right there. Dad, you stay where you are, Bob. Dad has no right to interfere in my affairs. Roy. Roy, I need help. What's the matter, Sheriff? Well, Bob Noble has a crowd around him. He's organizing a gang of his friends to ride out and get Shell Platt. Oh, I knew something like that would happen, Roy. Shell Platt? Yes, for wounding you. But why go after him? He's no good, but he's never been... Look here, fella. Shell Platt's the man who shot you, isn't he? I'm not saying who did it. That's my business, and mine alone. Now, Roy, we'd better hurry. We don't want any angry mobs in this country. Go ahead, Roy. I'll stay with Bob. All right. Only keep him here. Do whatever you have to, but keep him here until we can get back. <laughs> I didn't kill anybody. There's no reason. You're coming along all the same, Mr. Platt. I won't spend one minute in jail. I haven't done anything that rates trouble with the law. Shell, we're taking you to jail to save your life. You only think you're taking me. He's going to draw, Roy. Hold it, Platt. Jonah, take his gun, will you? Well, sure thing. By doggies, I didn't see your hand move, Roy, but you sure grabbed a gun from Summers. Give me that thing, you poor cat. Don't touch my gun. Boy, boy, you pigeon toe chisser cat. You not get it, Brad. You get an old soldier, will you, you jughead? Yeah, huh? Yeah. I bet you he'll have more respect for his country now. Say, my old sidekick is really all right. Jonah, I'm proud of you. <clears throat> Tin Star. I've been a trying my best to hold my temper, but I just naturally get my hackles up when somebody hits an old soldier, especially if it's me. Come on, get up, Platt. We came here to save your life. We're wasting our time unless we move fast. This shark cup will save us a lot of time. We'll need every minute. Be rough if we met Noble and his mob on the way to Platt's Ranch. People nobody wants to hear about. Now that's oh no. I hope we do meet him. I'll take Noble on any day of the week. If we figured right, Sheriff, they'll be riding the main trail, not cutting through the mountains. <laughs> What's the matter, boy? Yeah, uh, triggers like me today, Roy. Nervouser than a small boy in a woodshed. Well, maybe he senses something we don't. Better stop, I guess. Hey. Somebody's coming up this trail. 
From beyond the next bend of the mountain trail comes the sound of approaching horsemen, a large group. Roy, Jonah, the sheriff, and their prisoner wait tensely to see if what they dread is true. The riders are coming nearer at a steady clip. Their voices can be heard distinctly. The hoofbeats of their horses are... Suddenly, the leader appears around the bend, then the first of his followers. Yes, Bob Noble! And the gang's with him! Ride for it! Plant, take the lead! We'll hold him off! The only place you'll be safe is in the cell! Ride for all your work if you want to live! safe in here for the time being. Yeah, yeah dry, that excitement knocked all them titles right out of my head. Noble and his men are outside, Sheriff. We better not try anything. I've got an arsenal in here. Well, give me a gun. I'll shoot it out with Noble any day in the week. You'll stay right where you are, Platt. These men are neighbors, even if they are overly excited. Overly excited, he says. Sheriff... I'll try to make it across the street to the doc's office. Don't do it, Roy. Those men outside are just looking for an excuse to use guns. We've got to have a statement from young Noble to know for sure that Shell tried to kill him. Roy, you're risking your life. Well, I'll have to chance it. Things can't go on this way. Outside, Roy faces the sullen men. He starts across the street. His eyes look directly into the eyes of the men standing in his path. He walks toward them. His steps firm, unwavering. The men step aside. No word is spoken. A low murmur from the sidelines now and then, but no word said aloud. Roy reaches the sidewalk. His back is toward the crowd now, but he does not turn. He goes straight ahead. He reaches the doctor's office, opens the door, and steps inside. Oh, Roy, what do you mean by taking a chance like that? Where's young Bob? The inner office. He gave me trouble for quite a while, but he's calmed down now. Yeah, but only for now. There's trouble, Bob. I want a straight answer. Was it Shell Platt who shot you? I told you before I can fight my own battles. I can't take time to argue. I... Wait. Look out this window, Bob. See those men? Your dad's leading them. They're here to wreck the jail and get Shell Platt. What am I supposed to do, cry? Shell's no friend of ours. They're going to take the law into their own hands unless we stop him. So what? Ah, uh, he's no good, Roy. He's just no good. Your dad's leading him. If Platt's killed, the law will hold your dad for murder. I want the truth, Bob. Is Platt the man who shot you? Come on, answer me, Bob. I'm in a spot, Roy. You bet you're in a spot. Well, not like that. What I mean is, if I talk, I'm in trouble. Is the trouble bad enough so you'd let your dad be found guilty of murder? No. No, I, I guess not. Well, then talk. Platt didn't shoot me. That's what I thought. Here, let's open this window. Now, you're going to tell your dad what you just told me. I, I, I... Go on. Noble! Noble! Look up here! Your boy wants to tell you something. Hold it, hold it a minute. Wait a minute. All right. Let's hear what Bob wants. Go on, Bob. Platt didn't shoot me! It wasn't Platt at all! Who did it? I can't tell you when you're out there, Dad. Come in here, Noble. Come in here and he'll tell you in private. Partner, nobody's going to have to ride herd on you to eat breakfast. No siree. Once you try new, improved post-toasties, the heap good cornflakes... You'll get up and go for them, because you're heading for the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Mmm, flakes of sweet kernel flavor, crackling fresh. They won't mush up in milk. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes, post toasties, heap good corn flakes. Say, big Indians, little Indians, everybody's wild about those fresh-tasting post-toasties. And with sugar and cream, they're heap-good nourishment, too. 
Tomorrow, head straight as an arrow for your favorite grocers and ask for new, improved Post Toasties. Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. <laughs> All right, Bob. Let's hear it, boy. He seems to be afraid, Roy. Oh. We're waiting, Bob. Let me see now. Jonah Wild's life among people. Hmm? Fairy. In fact, he's been. We're waiting, son. This is going to be tough on you, Dad. Might be even tougher on the man who pulled the trigger. It wasn't Platt. It wasn't anybody you know. Dad, I... Well, I guess I'm a pretty bad son. I'm a member of the rustling gang. Go on. I double-crossed them, and they've got it in for me. Oh, boy, this is terrible. You see, a couple of weeks ago, I needed some extra money. I took some that belonged to the gang. They found out about it, and, well, I I guess I signed my own death warrant. I don't believe you, Bob. You wouldn't sign up with rustlers. I did, though. Roy, I, I guess I'd like to go to jail. I'll have the sheriff put you in a separate cell from the two rustlers we caught this morning. Yeah, I wouldn't live long in with them. Well, so long, Dad. Bob. Bob, before we go over, let's talk a minute. You can't escape paying for what wrong you've done, but you can show that you're sorry and want to be on the right side of the law again. Do you want to tell us where the wrestling gang has its headquarters? I don't know, Roy. Let me think a minute. Civilized and uncivilized acquaintances. Yes. No, no, Zing. Well, Bob? I'll... The headquarters is at halfway point, the cave there. If you got two of them, besides me, there are eight men left. Thanks, Bob. This will probably help you get a lighter sentence when your case comes up in court. Roy, if the men outside believe you, maybe you could put their energy to good use. Help take the rustling gang, you mean? That's just what I aim to do, Dale. Jonah, aren't you going with Roy and the men? Yes, I was. Huh? Oh, 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 yeah. Yes, What's I What's the matter with you, pacing up and down and giggling and smirking that way? Oh, well, Dale, I, I got something on my mind. I say, real delicate. Oh, yes, I think you mentioned something about that. Yes, mm-hmm. Yes, I'd been in training for it all day. <clears throat> I kept my temper when the sheriff was a-goading me. Did you notice that? I noticed. Uh-huh. But you said you wanted help with this, uh, delicate matter. Yes, hmm? Well, I can't very well help unless I know what to do. No, you can't. Well, it, uh, it, <laughs> I was, uh, well, <clears throat> well uh, saying what I have to is, it's kind of, <clears throat> it's kind of embarrassing, Dale. <laughs> like as if I was walking around with a, with a hole in my sock. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, I, uh, got almost a chapter of my book done. Yes. Yeah, uh, wrote by hand, though. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it ought to be wrote by typewriter. Well, sure. Sure. Well, yes, but the only typewriter in town is owned by the... <laughs> he's owned by the school marm. <laughs> well? Uh, well, Dale, uh, would you ask the school marm if she'd please to type my book? Me? Well, you ask her yourself. No, oh, sure. <laughs> Why, no. Jonah, why? <laughs> I just can't help it, you know. <laughs> oh, sure. Every time that lady looks at me out from under them long lashes, I just feel all the breath go out of me, and I, I say, well, I sort of will clean away to nothing. Well, Jonah. Hey, oh. Mm. oh, get on out here if you're riding with us. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, sir, Roy. I'm a coming. I say, I'm a coming. Oh. Hey. What's the matter with you? You look like... Jonah, you haven't got your weather eye out for some lady friend, have you? <laughs> no, you don't. No, well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. My old sidekick, 61 years a soldier, a private all the way, and he's about to lose the war. <laughs> Do 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 do
I'm looking for a cowboy and a handsome one, of course, with a two-seated saddle and a one-gated horse. And I'm yearning for a blue sky with a great big yellow moon and a slow-riding cowboy who will croon me up to a song of the sagebrush and cattle who will sing me to sleep. In a replete seated saddle And until I find that cowboy I'll search out every source For a two-seated saddle With a one-gated horse A girl, and until I find that cowboy, I'll search out every source for a two-seated saddle with a one-gated horn. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials Each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Ralph Moody, Sam Edwards, and Bob Griffin. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you till we meet again. That's it for this week. We'll be back next week with more old-time radio. I hope you can join us then. Till then, this is Jim Dolan thanking you for listening.